Now let's discuss more of the headlines and simple keywords with Adam. We are now joined by Adam on Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Jian, and happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. Let's dive straight into today's first keyword. Phased measures. Yes. Well, South Korean government called for the immediate withdrawal of North Korean troops sent to support Russia in the war in Ukraine. It also warned that it would take phased measures based on the level of military cooperation between Pyongyang and Moscow. What do we have more? Right. So this came after an emergency meeting of the National Security Council. The government indicated that if the situation worsens, it might consider providing Ukraine with offensive weapons. A senior presidential office uh, official said defensive weapons would be the first option, but offensive weapons could be considered later, depending on how things develop, of course. Now, Deputy National Security Advisor Kim Tae-yo said North Korea's continued military cooperation with Russia will not be ignored. He added that Seoul will respond firmly in cooperation with the international community. The top office did not reveal specific details of the planned responses, explaining that doing so could influence the actions of other parties. However, uh, it assured that the government has prepared scenarios for different situations. The NSC participants condemned North Korea for sending military support to Russia, calling it a serious threat to both South Korea and global security. They also pointed out that it violates UN Security Council resolutions, and they further criticized the North Korean regime for focusing on nuclear and missile developments while ignoring its people's needs and sending young North Koreans to fight in Russia's war. But the government also confirmed its commitment to pursuing peaceful unification on the Korean Peninsula, Meanwhile, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky called for an uh, increased international pressure uh, on North Korea. And he said Ukrainian authorities have information about the training of two units of the North Korean military with perhaps 6,000 uh, men each. So again, expressing concerns over this uh, troop deployment. Mm, North Korean military personnel, each consisting of 6,000 soldiers, are being trained currently. And South Korea's stance is clearly firm. What is our second keyword? Loan to Ukraine. That is right. The European Parliament has approved a new loan package to support Ukraine with up to 35 billion euros. Future revenues from frozen Russian assets. What's the latest? Right. So the Parliament voted by 518 in favour to 56 against. There were 61 abstentions. Now, with all EU decision making procedures completed, the funds will be provided by the end of next year. The deal is part of a broader initiative by G7 allies to provide 45 billion euros to Kyiv as soon as possible. The 35 billion euros will be undesignated and untargeted, according to EU officials. That means the Ukrainian government will have maximum flexibility to spend the assistance. Now, Brussels hopes to start doling out the money early next year. Now, the EU has taken the lead in detailing its contribution and significantly increased its initial commitment The final loan amount from the EU within the 35 billion euro limit may be adjusted based on the contributions from other G7 nations. Now, other countries are expected to announce their plans during the G7 finance ministers meeting that's going to be held in Washington uh, in two days time. In fact, now the US is reportedly considering offering up to 20 billion dollars. Now, despite these plans, concerns about repayment and guarantees do remain. Two thirds of the frozen Russian assets are held in the EU and extending the sanctions requires unanimous approval from all 27 member states every six months. Hungary, which opposes aid to Ukraine and maintains a friendly stance toward Russia, could block the extension of these sanctions, putting the loan repayments at risk. Uh, The US has already expressed concern about the EU's uncertain decision-making process and has requested additional safeguards after the G7 agreement. Uh, The European Commission uh, proposed extending the sanctions renewal period from six months to 36 months. But Hungary... um, is resisting and wants to delay the decision until after the U.S. presidential election. Now, changing the sanctions renewal rules also requires unanimous approval from all member states as well. So there is this ambition to provide Ukraine with this financial assistance, but of course, it's not going to be an easy road ahead. No, well, it, the EU's decision marks a significant financial commitment here to Ukraine. And it also adds another layer to international support efforts. So, Adam, what is our next keyword? 
Korean arms sale. Korean arms sales. That is right. Well, Poland is reportedly moving forward with plans to purchase Korean weapons, including over 150K9 house sears, howitzers, that is, and chum multiple rocket launchers worth about five trillion won without relying on export financing from the Korean government. Tell us more. Right, so Poland is reportedly negotiating with European banks to secure funding for its purchase of 152 K9 howitzers and 72 tonnery rocket launchers from Hanna Aerospace as part of a second contract. The contracts were signed in December last year and April this year with contract uh, amounts of 3.2 trillion won and 2.2 trillion won respectively. These contracts require a financial agreement between the two governments to be signed by November this year for them to take effect. Negotiations have faced challenges due to limited additional export uh, financing from the Korean government, which had already supported Poland's first contract. Now, while Korea suggested using private loans from local banks, Poland preferred government-level financing because of lower interest rates. Now, in the first contract, Poland received about $10 billion in loans and guarantees from the Export-Import Bank of Korea and Korea Trade Insurance Corporation. Now, defense contracts usually include policy financing and guarantees from the exporting country, which is standard in international deals. Poland's decision to secure its own funding is partly driven by the ongoing war in Ukraine, with security concerns rising. Warsaw wants to avoid delays in strengthening its defence capabilities. Uh, Poland, which shares a border with Ukraine, fears becoming the next front line between the West and Russia if Ukraine is defeated. Uh, There is also growing concern in Poland about the potential election of Donald Trump as well, who has uh, suggested stopping aid to Ukraine, adding to Poland's sense of urgency. Uh, Some experts suggest that Seoul needs to strengthen its export financing capabilities for future large-scale uh, defence deals, even though Poland uh, wants to get its own financing. Mm, well, Poland's move to secure such a significant arms deal on its own highlights the growing trust in South Korean defence technology on the global stage. So what is our fourth keyword, Adam? World Volunteer Conference. Mm, yes. South Korean President Yoon song yeol has given a speech at the World Volunteer Conference in Busan. He said humanity is facing unprecedented challenges and strong solidarity is quite important, quite essential to protect freedom and prosperity. What, did, what else did he say? Right. So he emphasized Korea's commitment to leading efforts to bridge gaps in development, climate and digitalization between nations. He highlighted the importance of citizens freely practicing the spirit of philanthropy and solidarity, noting that volunteer work is a key solution. He recalls that Busan, once a city of refugees during the Korean War, overcame hardship through mutual help, sharing and care. He pointed out that Busan and Korea are living examples of how much can be achieved when people can come together with good intentions. He expressed hope that spreading the spirit of solidarity would make the world a brighter and warmer place. He also mentioned that since his administration began, the budget for official development assistance, or ODA for short, has been significantly increased. And Korea will continue to offer more aid to the international community. Now, the World Volunteer Conference, hosted by the International Association for Volunteer Efforts, is the only global event dedicated to volunteer work. This marks the second time Korea has hosted the event, with the first being in Seoul all the way back in 2002. It was also the first time in 22 years that a sitting president has actually attended the conference as well. Mm, Well, his speech definitely highlights the importance of global unity in helping others to tackle today's challenges, as you mentioned. And moving on to our last keyword, Adam. Medical vacuum. That's right. Well, the Korean Academy of Medical Sciences and the Korean Association of Medical Colleges have decided to join a government medical dialogue group. This is sort of a consultative group. The move, this move raises hopes of resolving the medical service gap that has lasted for over eight months here in Korea. What's the latest? Right, so the Korean Academy of Medical Services represents most medical specialists, while the KEMC is a group of medical school deans responsible for education, uh, medical education. Now, their decision to join the talks has raised expectations that formal discussions between the medical community and the government will begin soon. However, the Korean Medical Association, the KMA, which is basically the main 
representative of the medical community has refused to join. Many junior doctors who are at the heart of the medical crisis remain opposed to participating as well. Additionally, there are still disagreements over key issues, such as the discussion of medical school quotas for 2025, which means that there are significant hurdles to overcome before a full resolution can be reached. Now, although the KMA has declined to participate in the decision of these two large organizations that I just mentioned to join the talk suggests that the medical community's views will still be well represented. Their decision to join was likely influenced by growing public pressure with the extended medical crisis and vacuum worsening the situation for patients. Additionally, with college admissions for, next, uh, for the next academic year already underway, insisting solely on opposing changes in next year's quotas was no longer seen as feasible. Uh, one major point of contention is whether the 2025 medical school quota will be included in the talks. The medical community has remained firm in opposing an increase for next year and has pushed for the issue to be discussed. However, the government has maintained that with the college admissions process already underway, it is too late to reconsider the 2025 uh, quota, although they are, they have expressed in the past uh, of being open to any quotas adjustments for the academic years after next year. Uh, there are hopes that the talks could still lead to solutions, uh, cautious hopes anyway. Now, in addition to the talks, other efforts like discussions organised by the Seoul National University's faculty are being held to explore potential solutions and more talks are planned uh, for the near future as well. But of course, as I said, um, still a lot of hurdles remain because of course the main opposing group, which is the KMA, is still opposed to joining these talks uh, and junior doctors who are all on strike, uh, most of them are on strike at the moment, are refusing to join as well. So whether this uh, dialogue group will actually bear fruit, of course, remains to be seen. Yes, but at least the decision to engage in talks is kind of a sort of a, a positive step that they are taking. There's still a long way to go before a full resolution can be reached. Well, thank you so much for your insightful coverage. And I'm wishing you a splendid day ahead. You two have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.